live in a vast sea of energy. Everything, every atom, every subatomic particle is in constant motion, spinning eternally. Even in the cold, dark, absolute vacuum of empty space, there exists what new physics is calling the quantum vacuum flux. It is the ether of the ancients, the life force energy of metaphysics, are the random fluctuations of this vast field of potential in which space and time are embedded. Now, theoretically and mathematically proven, the question no longer is, does this zero-point energy exist? But rather, can we tap this inexhaustible resource of free and unlimited energy and manifest new technologies which are both inexpensive and environmentally safe? One thing is certain, if we continue on the course of rapidly burning fossil fuels and relying on nuclear fission, the future of our civilization is in grave jeopardy. We're at a critical juncture where the ravages of industrial pollution and radioactive waste have exceeded the carrying capacity of Mother Earth. Our finite reserves of oil and gas will be completely exhausted by the year 2025 at the present rate of consumption. Large corporate and governmental self-interest ignore this pending crisis and resist change to the status quo. The question must be asked, is this the kind of world we want to pass down to future generations? Emerging on the frontiers of science, a pioneering breed of theoretical physicists and inspired inventors are challenging the way we think about harnessing the unseen forces of nature. Despite ridicule, lack of funding, and outright suppression, they are confronting an outmoded classical worldview and ushering in a monumental scientific revolution. In this program, you will witness the groundbreaking work of tireless inventors and visionary scientists who may hold the keys to true energy independence for every person on Earth, from Nikola Tesla to the reality of cold fusion and beyond. Join us as we present Free Energy, the race to zero point. Most people would agree you can't get something for nothing. There's no such thing as a free lunch. And yet, we get our oxygen free from the air we breathe. We get sunlight free and water. That used to be free until bottled drinking water came along. But what about energy? We've always had to pay for that, whether it's wood or coal, oil or electricity. It's always been the rule that you can never get back more energy than what you put in in the first place. That's a fundamental law of nature. Physicists of the 19th century figured that out with the first law of thermodynamics, the conservation of energy. Maybe so. But science has come a long way since then. And laws? Well, there's never been one that hasn't been broken. At the turn of the last century, Nikola Tesla, the great inventor who gave us alternating current and the Tesla coil, stated, Electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities. It can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other fuel. This new power for the driving of the world's machinery will be derived from the energy which operates the universe, the cosmic energy. With over 200 patents to his name, Tesla was well on his way to transmitting electric power without wires when he ran into trouble with J.P. Morgan and the financial interest of 1901. His ambitious Wardenclyffe project to magnify and transmit power to ships at sea and eventually to provide free electricity for the whole world was scuttled by Morgan, leaving Tesla penniless and disillusioned. The wealthy industrialist of the time knew that their vast plans to wire the world with copper from the mines they owned 
would be upset if they could no longer control the supply and means of delivery. Tesla's beliefs about developing technology in harmony with nature conflicted with the prevailing American attitude at the time that mankind was put on earth to subdue and dominate nature. Little by little, Tesla was denounced as a crackpot and deleted from the historical record. At the time of his death in 1943, Tesla's truckloads of scientific papers were seized by U.S. government agencies. Who knows what ideas and remarkable devices our world could have inherited if only his genius was recognized. When J.P. Morgan prohibited Tesla from broadcasting uh, electric power overseas with Wardenclyffe Tower, he said, I can't put a meter on it, therefore I won't finance it. Uh, that literally changed the course of history. And for the past almost 100 years, we've been uh, suffering under that um, profit motive. Of course, one could say that mankind was hardly ready to handle the awesome forces Tesla had glimpsed. The 20th century would bring world wars and technological innovations far more horrific than had ever been witnessed by Western civilization. Even before Tesla, the groundwork that would lead to free energy had been pioneered by great scientists like Michael Faraday and James Clerk Maxwell. In 1831, Faraday modeled his rotating magnet and disk generator after the Earth, whose rotation around a molten metal core keeps the planet spinning in a self-sustaining magnetic field. His work later resulted in the development of the dynamo. Also called a homopolar or unipolar generator, the Faraday generator provides the basis for much of what is being done today in the electromagnetic approach to free energy, such as with Bruce De Palma's In Machine and Paramahamsa Tiwari's Space Power Generator. Repeated experiments have detected anomalous electrical outputs greater than that used to rotate the disk. The friction and voltage limitations have hampered efficiency and therefore widespread acceptance. James Clerk Maxwell, best known for his Maxwell's equations, is reputed to have set things straight with his theories of electrical properties in a way that eliminates zero-point energy. But Maxwell's more advanced work allowed for the existence of an ether, a substance finer than air, which since the time of Plato had been considered a scientific fact. Well, the prevailing belief of the time was that the vacuum was a thin material fluid, the so-called material ether which we know today is false. The ether is there, but it's not the observable material fluid. Faraday had re-established this notion of lines of force, but he thought the electromagnetic field or the electromagnetic disturbances in the ether, so to speak, was really twanging strings. The strings were under tension, and when you had a disturbance, what you really did was pluck the strings. Now, Maxwell states very clearly that he set about to actually capture exactly what Faraday was doing in his lines of force in the theory, and that's what he did. Maxwell's actual theory is 20 equations and 20 unknowns. In quaternions, which is a higher topology algebra, you can do things in that that you can't dream of in doing in tensors, and you certainly can't do in vectors, and you certainly can't do with the theory that's taught at our universities. All that remains to be rediscovered and uncovered. The now famous Michelson Morley experiment at the turn of the century failed to detect a stationary ether, so classical physics presumed once and for all that it did not exist. 